That big hit from Adoree Jackson walks off under his own power in this 20 to 10 game. And join Fox Sports in giving the gift of play this holiday season by supporting nonprofit partner Angel City Sports in its efforts to provide free adaptive sports opportunities for kids, adults, and veterans with physical disabilities or visual impairments. Go to angelcitysports.org to learn more and donate. Merry Christmas. Hope you're having a great one wherever you are. Eagles trying to treat their fans to an 11th consecutive win over the Giants at the link. Trying to snap the losing streak. This season back on track. Still control their own destiny in the division. If they went out, they'd win the East. The loss would open the door for the Cowboys. Second down. Quick throw. It's Dallas Goddard. And Okereke is over there to hit it. Finish off by John Ward. Third down. Bobby Okereke, I tell you what, I mean, signs a contract, leading tackler in his first season with the Giants. And he's given them a couple things they've lacked. That's a good linebacker and a free agent deal that hits. <laughs> they've lacked both those things in recent years. Good to see A.J. Brown comes back into the game ahead of this third and four play. Eagles in field goal range. Hurts looks to throw. Goddard's got a first down. Team leading six catch of the day for the Philly tight end. And a really good job by Dallas Goddard. It's just a really good feel. Watch him as he breaks out because Trey Hawkins right there is working on A.J. Brown. You see him kind of gear it down right there. Feels that really nice soft spot in between the zone. Hawkins is in for Jackson. Hawkins started this season as a starter. Has hardly played lately. Now Jackson does come back in. So both guys have left the field on that big collision a couple plays ago are back. Minutes to go in this third quarter. Need to stand in the empty set. Hurts another quick throw and it's A.J. Brown. No room out there. Xavier McKinney, but a flag flies. And Brown still doesn't quite look right been smooth and it hasn't been for a while for Philadelphia and that's where all the angst has come from from the fan base from the local media and we mentioned it earlier but given the schedule that's left they're not going to be many people that are completely convinced no matter what they do over these final few games because it's Giants Cardinals and then again Giants yeah you, you just got to stay internally as, as the football family you know we had a we had a terrible December one time when I was playing with the Dallas Cowboys and you know we went on and actually won our third and final Super Bowl that year but if you would ask some people around the football world who's a threat to win it is Dallas a threat there probably were a lot of people that would say absolutely not I remember these guys last year. They didn't play great down the stretch. Wound up going to the Super Bowl. Hurts over the middle. Incomplete and almost intercepted. Okereke had his hands on it. Just does a great job of reading the eyes. Right in the middle. Going to read the eyes. He takes them right to that in-breaking route. This is a guy, part of his value has been obviously the production, but how about the fact that he's played every snap in his first year with the Giants, even though he's broken a rib, broken a finger, injured his hip, every snap, Bobby Okereke. Second down and 20. That is picked up! Adoree Jackson changing this game! Hurts in pursuit, will not get him! It's a pick six! Jackson a flag at the end of the play as he rips him down by the back of his jersey a Dory Jackson has the Giants within a score on the play you're gonna have a slip Dallas Goddard is gonna slip but I, I just I think a Dory Jackson plays this so well I don't know why. An interception by the defense returned for a touchdown. During the play, personal foul, horse collar tackle, number one of the passing team. New York has elected to enforce that penalty on the try. We will attempt a two point try from the one yard line. They've been so close so many times today to making that big play to define the winning streak. They finally get it from a Dory Jackson 76 yard pick six.
And you heard Ronald Torbert say they're going to enforce the penalty here on the try and go for two. For Jalen Hurts, third interception over the last four games, had the two picks against Seattle on Monday. And again, Goddard stumbled out of his break there. But either way, for the Eagles, it's gone con from concerning to alarming. And it stayed that way. They motion Taylor out, and it's Barkley ready to take the snap. Saquon Barkley going for two, stood up, keeps on turning to the goal line, and he's in. That's the no shot. Barkley refused to be denied, and it's a two-point game. Well, you've got a 600-pound, 600-pound squat. squat quarterback we've got a, a running back that squats 600 pounds as well and it's basically the same thing but he does that all on his own he doesn't have anybody coming up behind to push but it's just using the strength the lower body strength of Saquon Barkley right there to get the football to break the plane and you come on the air talking about if the Giants are going to win this game they've got to get the takeaways and it's such a hard thing to do. The, the Giants have done a great job of making that a part of every. You can't count on that. But to have that mindset coming in here today and then to get the turnovers that they've got in special teams and the play by Adoree Jackson, you make the point, can you finish that play? Can you just finish that play? I thought he was going to bobble it and drop it. Yeah. And he's able to secure that football and take it down the sideline. Well, that's how it's been all day. It's been a bobble and a drop. Mm -hmm. It's been a, a, you know, a grasp of the jersey, but unable to get a guy down. But then Adoree Jackson finally does come through. And we mentioned it earlier. When he was in free agency a few years ago, he met with the Giants. He was scheduled to come down here to Philadelphia, meet with the Eagles. The meeting with the Giants went so well, he canceled the trip down here to Philadelphia, signed the contract with the Giants, and three years later, he's made a massive play against Philly. So Hurts and the offense back to the field with the Blues, not because of the interception, not because it's 20-18, to 18, but because the Eagles have lost three straight and have failed to show signs of coming out of that. You can explain Dallas, you can explain San Francisco. The score got away from them, but I don't think the fan base was panicked at that point. I think everything really kind of hit home Monday night in the loss to Seattle. And here they are right here doing the same thing again. I think the fair catch on the kickoff is another situation where you're playing, you're playing not to lose. And that's not what Philadelphia is about. Philadelphia always plays aggressive and plays to win. And that just kind of sends a message. You know, Mason Crosby's not going to bury that in the end zone. But because of that fumble to start the second half, you don't have trust in your return team. They're blitzing it. Throw to the outside. Pinpoint for Brown. Jalen Hurts under pressure there. Finds Brown in the sideline for a first down. Yeah, the guys just got to step up. There is so much talent on this offense. They just got to step They got to step up. Charge back into this from down 20 to 3, using two takeaways in the third quarter to get to within two. So the pressure on Hurts and the Eagles with pressure coming here on the first play. Okereke pursues, he throws, incomplete. A flag in the backfield. Likely a hold on the Eagles. It's going to be the seventh penalty of the day on Philadelphia. Holding. Offense number 65. 10-yard penalty. First down. They get Lane Johnson this time. Oop, not that one. That one. We're going against Micah McFadden. Seems surprising that Lane Johnson would have to hold that. I, I don't agree with that call at all. Um, Lane Johnson is one of the best, if not the best, right tackles in the NFL. Going up against Micah McFadden, who he's much bigger and stronger than. I, I don't agree with that holding call. Another blitz coming on first and 20 and an off-mark throw. A.J. Brown, the intended receiver, and Hurts threw his hands up in the air, upset with something as that ball sailed by Brown. Plot and coverage, second and 20. And that's that's one of the things that you know where there's smoke there's fire right when the when the crowd is upset and when the crowd boos that those are fans that are just frustrated when you've got your your players that are out of sync and they they can't connect and sometimes the frustration boils over and we've seen that during the course of the season with Philadelphia you, you wonder if there's not something a little bit deeper going on with this team boy all gas no breaks from Wink Martindale on huh? every play they got everybody up by the line of scrimmage Julio Jones has his first catch of the day and it ends very quickly 
Isaiah Simmons over to get him along with Nick McLeod. It's third and long. And what are we seeing? We're seeing that that confidence build by the Giants that swagger coming back to this defense. When you have an opportunity to put an opponent away, you have to, especially a divisional opponent. It doesn't matter what has happened over the last 10 years. That is meaningless during the course of the game. And for these Giants who have been eliminated from playoff contention, what do they have to play for there? Sick of losing to the Eagles, trying to win here for the first time in a decade. There's a flag. We put that on repeat lately. And at this rate, they could hang on and win this game, and they still might get booed going off of the field. Like you said, start, Joe. Offense number 62. It's a five-yard penalty. It's third down. Winning cures all ills, but it depends on how sick you are, right? I, I don't I, – there is just something not right, and we've been trying to put our finger on it all week, you know, talking about things, looking at the statistics, looking at the analytics, and, and it, there's just something that you can't really put your finger on when we had Philadelphia last year at this time compared to what we're seeing from Philadelphia this year at this time. Well, some big things, a lot of little things, but you put them all together and it has things seem an extra off kilter. Trying to end this three game skid. Third down and a mile. Kurt steps up and delivers. Oh, perfect strike. Well, that changed things for the Eagles. Just over the outstretched hand to A.J. Brown. This is... This is the frustrating part for, for the fan base in Philadelphia. You see all the little mistakes in all the issues, and then you watch this. Look at this throw. That is outstanding. Isaiah Simmons is right in your line. You've got the trust and the confidence to get it over him. Right to A.J. Brown. Max difficulty level right there on third and 20. They get 32 yards. The big plays that were such a staple last season have been missing this year. The crowd comes to life a little bit. Swift or Gainwell breaking free. Kenneth Gainwell stop and start to the 20. And we talked about the Giants tackling well this afternoon. They're going to have an opportunity right there. There's Micah McFadden, 41, does everything right. Shoots the gap, is in a position, leaves his feet too soon. You've got to stay with Kenneth Gainwell. You've got to bring some strength to make that tackle or he's going to run through your arms. Kenny Gainwell having one of his best days of the season. Third year man from Memphis to the 20. He's got it again. McFadden tackles him. It's almost like the crowd is saying, this is us. This is the Eagles. Keep it going, boys. And you get a guy like Kenneth Gamewell that, that's having these types of runs that gets everybody excited too. Not not just that throw, that great throw by Jalen Hurts to A.J. Brown to convert that to getting downfield. Brown, who's 32-yard catch on third down and 20. It's changed the mood for the moment. He's now set up first down and goal. The one catch in the first half. He's been the guy in the second. Swift makes a move, finds the end zone, touchdown Eagles. Well, this is blocked really well, but this is all DeAndre Swift at the end because you got two giant defenders that he's going to make miss to get into the end zone. Watch right here. Xavier McKinney has got him dead to rights. If he can square him up, and it's that little cut north and south right there. That was impressive. That's where the frustration comes from, from the Philadelphia fan base, when you watch your Eagles do exactly what they did on that drive. First touchdown for their offense since early on him, and he's leaned on him in this second half. That huge hook up to 32 yards on third and a mile to keep the drive going. Let's finish off with a swift touchdown. And thank you to uh, J.C. Hall, by the way. Those incredible pieces that she made for us only by writing the names of the players over and over again. Unbelievable. Incredible.
and then he became the go-to guy on that drive. The, the penultimate drive of this game up until this point, it was all A.J. Brown and Jalen Hurts. This half had been all Giants prior to that play. Outscoring the Eagles prior to that touchdown, 15 to nothing in this half, even though they only have 49 yards of offense. So it's not as simple as Tyrod Taylor's come into the game and everything's changed. No, Tyrod Taylor took over with a ball at the 15-yard line after a fumble on the opening kickoff of the half, and then a touchdown and a pick six. The Giants are going to keep this comeback going. He and the offense have to get it going. They have to do their job now. They got help from special teams. They got help from their defense. Now it's time for this offense to stand on their own two feet. A five on first down. Here it is down the seam, and it's Daniel Bellinger. First down to midfield for the tight end. Pretty easy right there. You got Darren Waller and Daniel Bellinger together going down the seam. I think you're going to be worried about number 12 a little bit more. Great job by Daniel Bellinger finding that soft spot and Tyrod Taylor finding him. First time today, Darrell, that they've attempted a pass more than nine yards down the field. Barkley, nice hole off the left side. Seven or eight on first down for Saquon Barkley, who's got 80 yards now. And has a shot at his first 100-yard game against Philly since he was a rookie in 2018. They have just committed to this play since the start of the second half. And, and it has been very successful this entire time. The, the Eagles defense is having a tough time stopping it up front. Give him seven, second and three. Under 10 to play. Barkley again. Not much there this time. Shaq Leonard. Barkley able to finish 40 so strong and even when there's nothing there it takes what looks like is going to be a loss and still gets a couple yards out of it. Got to credit this offensive line. It, it, they've taken a lot of criticism because of the sack numbers that they've given up this season. Today they have done a really nice job not only protecting the quarterbacks both Tommy DeVito and, and now Tyrod Taylor but also this run game has really started to show over the last couple weeks. Next lineman in the game as Reddick pursues Taylor. He's got an open Waller, but it's underthrown and incomplete. Hassan Reddick in hot pursuit of Tyrod Taylor saved what might have been a touchdown. I, I know that you talk about the ability to have this, the element of surprise, right? We're going to move Tyrod Taylor out to the left, and he's right-handed. But if you're going to take a shot like that, if you're going to design a play that's got this potential, to get your star tight end beyond the defenders wide open, give your quarterback a great shot. Why not go to the right? Why not put him on his right hand, moving right? Fourth and one. The throw, incomplete. Well, they converted a couple of fourth down and short in the first half and then got stopped. Hassan Reddick, if you're going to have success on a fourth and one play. Third turnover on downs today for the Giants. Nine point game, Eagles take over again. And it is DeAndre Swift. I think it's one of the cooler things that the NFC East has had a different division champion for 18 years. I think it's it's such an ironic thing. It's, it just it shows you how competitive this di this division is from year to year. So you wanted to keep going? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to keep going, but I don't think it's going to. Hurts finds Goddard crossing the field. Dallas got her down to the 30. And I'm sure Eagles fans and Giants fans and everybody else out there saying, yeah, Daryl just likes parody, eh? right? <laughs> He's a nice cowboy. I d it just kind of the bread and butter, this, this whole offense, right? You know, I, we talk about A.J. Brown and how important he is, but I, I think right behind him is Dallas Goddard. And then, you know, Devontae Smith is just that guy that oh, you, you forget about number six, and next thing you know, you're watching him sprint into the end zone. Smith today just three catches. He's got just the three catches. Brown only had one until halftime has come to life. Goddard's led the way. Seven total. And the Giants 30. Hurts pulls. Dane Belton able to get there. And the flag coming. I don't know. Now that's on the front of the shoulder pad. That is not on the nameplate or inside the, the, the shoulder pad. Hopefully get a little assist here, but this this is all on the front of the shoulder pad. It looks like it because he's behind him. And the officials do get together and pick up the penalty. The second down. 
Hey, it's Christmas. <laughs> he says, throw the flag. And they did, but they picked it up too. And so a loss of four is Dean Belton, second year man from Iowa, gets the tackle for loss. Eagles trying to put this game on ice. Giants trying to stand tall and uh, keep some kind of hope. They're down nine. Second and 14 here. Against the blitz, here comes Kenneth Gainwell. That left side of the line just powers forward. And Wow, man, washed them down, didn't they? Boy, they made that look easy. It just, this is, this is impressive. Sue Opeta, Jordan Mailata, I mean, Kenneth Gainwell is about five yards downfield, and that surge is still going. Got 80 yards there, so third and six coming up, and now this. Perfect here to have a shot. He's going to run. Get a little block there from Wondell Robinson. So the NF NFC playoff picture looks like this. The 49ers, if they win two of their last three, they will be the one seed. What a game coming up tonight, 49ers against Ravens. The Lions are right there trying to pounce at the 49ers. Sit DeAndre Swift getting close to 100 yards. He's at 96. He's got it. Left side and dropped in the backfield by Jihad Ward. It's a loss of five to bring this to the two-minute warning. And right out there under the edges of field goal range, Jake Elliott obviously as good as anybody is only going to make it an eight-point game, and the Giants are still going to have a shot. When you consider where this thing was at halftime, that's all Brian Dable and this New York team can ask for. A great job by the defense on first down, second down against Philadelphia right there. A lot of negative yardage kind of forcing that very conservative play call on third down, but that's a credit to what Wink Mountaindale's groups did on first and second down. To Hertz today, 24 of 38. He's over 300 yards. He gets a touchdown for the first time in a few games. There was the one interception. You could argue it happened because his receiver fell, but one of the key plays of second this game. Philadelphia, this is a 30 second timeout. And now it's going to be up to Jake Elliott to try and get this back to an eight point game and we welcome you back inside one more time here Christmas again we really appreciate you spending some of your Christmas day with us and the Giants made this way more of a game than I think most people thought it would be and I think the big thing for the Giants was they came back they went down and they came back they kept fighting there yeah. were some things that they had talked about with the team that have to happen at the start of the game and they didn't and Philadelphia kind of got off to that start we we're like oh boy this could get away from them pretty quickly and, and a great job by Brian, Brian Dable and his team kind of steadying that ship and kind of fighting through it and, and again then Philadelphia came back so there's a lot of things answered but I think the biggest thing for Philadelphia is is there's still some points of concern after this game today if they're able to finish this and win 43 yarder for Jake Elliott looking for his fourth make of the day and he's got it as automatic as they come in the NFL Eagles fans don't need a long memory to know that this game is not over. A week ago, a 92-yard touchdown drive for the Seahawks to beat them on Monday night. A minute 10 here, no timeouts. The Giants need a touchdown and a two-point conversion. About, you know, at 10 and 1, there was still some, some things there that you're, you're worried about. And, you know, wasn't completely convinced yet. Taylor on the first play, lofting for Darren Waller, and it's broken up as Blankenship was shot out of a cannon. There's a flag in the backfield. Hassan Reddick hit Tyrod Taylor, who's arguing that it was a low hit. What kind of that helmet Personal is foul. right on the knee. Bucking the passer. Defense number seven. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Oh, that's another one that's just it's moving out. He, he's he's still protected because he hasn't declared himself as a runner. And that's a, that's another one that's real close, right on that line. But 
Ninth Philadelphia penalty today. Moves it up to the 40. Minute three. Tyra Taylor steps away from Graham. On the move to the sideline. Too tall for an open Robinson. Wondell Robinson had some room there at the 35-yard line, but Taylor overshoots him. And again, just going back to that throw that Jalen Hurts made to A.J. Brown, a very similar situation on the move, some coverage underneath that's going to force you to kind of get the ball up and over and just unable to, to make the same type of throw that Jalen Hurts made. All the talk about Tommy DeVito and let him do the three-game winning streak. Ben should have time. Tyrod Taylor comes back in. He's benefited from the takeaways. The takeaways have teed up a chance to be a hero here. Stands in, floats one, Robinson incomplete. Roby was retreating there in coverage. I don't know if he quite got a hand on it, but with a look on Robinson's face, wondering if he maybe should have had this. Yeah, I, I don't know if he does get a deflection. He's going to have his hand wave. Watch 33 dropping back to make the play on the ball. Looks like oh. it's over his outstretched hand. So that's that's one that Wandell Robinson has to come down with in this situation. And so it's another one, Daryl, that's a lot like the throw that Hurts made the Brown. Eagles made the play. Giants didn't. Third and ten. Waller's got it. First down into Eagles territory. Clock runs with the Giants out of timeouts. Darren Waller's first catch of the day. They hurry it up to the line and spike it with 37 seconds. That's something I would have bet on that it would be 33 25 right now and, and Darren Waller would make his first catch with 37 seconds to go. You know, one of the best playmakers at tight end in the NFL the last few years. Now, injuries the last couple seasons, but prior to that, huge player for Vegas. Got him in a trade this offseason. Got him back from injury last week. His first catch has him in Philly territory. Taylor to the sideline. Barkley got what he could. Gain of about three. Second and seven, 32 seconds. Again, no timeouts for Tyrod Taylor in this offense. Tyrod Taylor in his 13th year thought that his time had come and gone. DeVito was in there. He was healthy and they stuck with DeVito. But another shot here on Christmas Day. Third and seven. Loads up and fires. One on one. Down the sideline and incomplete. No flags. Roby the coverage on Robinson. And so the last chance here for the Giants. Going to come out of that slot on you. It's kind of an out and up. And boy, there's a lot of contact down here at the point of the catch. Really fighting for it. I, I think he got, I think Wondell Robinson's got a, He's got to, to question that one. There, there was a lot going on right there. I don't know if he can get back. Was he restricted from getting back by Bradley Roby? Got to hurry and snap it down to two. They get it off. Whistles, though. Looks like maybe the Eagles use a timeout. They did. Last one I'm taken. Out. Philadelphia, that's their second and a half. Uh, Nick Sirianni want to be sure ahead of this fourth and seven out. play. It's another chance for Sirianni's team and for Matt Patricia's defense to get that last stop, something they failed to do against Drew Locke in Seattle last week. And again, when you look at the overall body work in this game, you get rid of the seven-yard touchdown. I know that's like you don't get rid of the seven-yard <laughs> touchdown, but even with let's put it this way, even with the 70-yard touchdown, only 272, without the turnovers, this game is a blowout. So the defense, some improvements from what was going on early on in the losing streak. Can they make it stand up? They need the 38-yard line. Fourth and seven. Taylor lets it rip. Waller's got it. Giants still have life. Darren Waller to the 26-yard line. 15 seconds and counting. And still counting. They're either going to have to spike it or this is going to be their last play. Spikes it with three. Boy, 10 seconds run off of the clock as they're hurrying to the line to kill it. 
this was a play that was run earlier in the drive with when they checked it down to Saquon Barkley. And they, were, they had Darren Waller on that same spot, so just flip it to the other side. You've got to understand right now what's going on. You've got to be able to pop up. If you can't go, you got to get out of bounds and get somebody in for you. But all those mechanics right there, he's trying to do it now, but late recognizing that, no timeouts. Clock is running. So here's the game. From the 26-yard line, Tyrod Taylor looking for a Christmas miracle. Directs traffic and throws back in the end zone. That's the ball game picked off by Ringo. The Eagles survive and end the losing streak.